Hello Mac Warriors, how is it going? Welcome to your daily dose of Mac Warrior Online. Today I'm playing the Bushwhacker. I'm playing Bushwhacker X2 because the Bushwhacker is out for Siebels now and I just wanted to show you a build that some of you are probably very very happy with. So I call this one the Micro Atlas as you can see and uh, it plays like it. And uh, yeah, we are going into uh, the build in a second. Very quick side note before we begin, uh, I was sick last weekend and I'm still feeling not that good but um, yeah, I just recorded some games and uh, I did a voice commentary afterwards so you won't see me on cam while playing the game and uh, yeah, that's just that. So let's dive into the Mac Lab and see what the build is all about. As you can see, uh, I did not use all of the hard points possible but I just made some smart choices and I just uh, chose some weapons uh, that are just working well together and this one was uh, yeah it was uh, actually inspired by an Atlas build and uh, I'm taking an AC-20 because an AC-20 is a very scary weapon deals 20 damage pinpoint and I just wanted to align uh, the rest of the weapons around that so that one has a range of 270 meters uh, so do the SRMs I'm taking two SRM4 and the medium lasers on top of that now that build here it is wrecking max uh, I'm absolutely honest, you are running a 55 tonner with that loadout and you have a 47.2 alpha strike and you're running around 80 kph with that, you have great hitboxes as you can see. So uh, the arms are irrelevant, just ignore the arms and if you just uh, yeah, ignore them then you see that the, the, the center torso is so narrow and you can splash the incoming damage so so nice when you are facing the enemy directly when you're just wiggling your nose and and that makes this build so amazing so we have the ac20 we have srms and we have medium lasers and uh, yeah you can go zombie with the build as well so uh, if you lose both side crosses you still have two medium lasers and and that's cool that is a really nice build uh, I'm a bit low on ammo here. Uh, I only have two tons for the SRMs and four tons for the AC-20, but that should be just enough. And again, you have still the medium lasers as backup when you're running out of ammo. Uh, and I'm running a standard engine, of course. Yeah, because we, we need the slots for the AC-20. That whole build will probably be even better when the light engines are coming out, but we will see that in July. So I'm going for the lowest uh, standard engine without the need of additional heat sinks. Standard engine 250. That is just enough to pack all of the weapons in there. And um, yeah, I'm stripping the, the arm armor to, to zero on the right arm. So only the armor quirks are left to 18. And uh, I bumped up uh, the left arm to 18 again so that I have a bit of symmetry here. I like that. I'm, I'm a big fan of that. The modules for that are a rated deprivation module and uh, probably an advanced seismic sensor if you if you have that unlocked already. Uh, and I'm taking the AC-20 cooldown and the SRM range here. Uh, AC-20 cooldown because it's the main weapon, that is the scary one, that is the big pinpoint damage weapon here. And the SRMs because um, the, the AC and the medium lasers, they have a damage drop, so we can't shoot them beyond optimal range. However, the SRMs not. They will just explode at 270 meters and therefore the little range bump here. The consumer builds are an improved UIV and the cool shot, pretty much straightforward brawling setup. And that's the build. I wish you all a lot of fun in the games that are coming. And uh, yeah, if you have that, don't forget to leave a rating or subscribe to the channel. But now it's time to hit the battlefield. All right, first game of the day. We are playing the Mining Collective and we are playing Domination here. And I am already set up in the circle on the front line, but I don't want to go in yet because my team is so scattered and I just want to wait for them to arrive. Now, what happens now is uh, we've got a dragon that is yeah, rushing in and he is kind of suicidal at that point. When, we, when you don't take the center immediately, you are having a bad time if you are going in late. And uh, as you can see, there he comes running with full speed to the circle and... Uh, yeah, I was okay. We, we have the, the numbers now, we can go in, but he is just rushing directly in front of me and he's getting a lot of fire there as a return. So, so don't do that. Just do that when you have the, the, um, the initiative, when you can go in first, but uh, when you wait so long, it is just not a good idea. Anyway, uh, we are sw swinging to the right side here. I see that there is PPC, a PPC blackjack on, on the right and I can't fight him, therefore I'm retreating immediately. I don't have the range to engage him directly and uh, therefore I'm uh, backing up, I'm getting to cover and I don't want to get shot uh, by him uh, in the early phase so that he removes a lot of armor and, and I can't brawl later. So preserve your armor, that's important. Also, I'm watching the upper levels here because I knew that there were enemies close by and as soon as I see that my team is orientating to the right, I am dropping here to low ground to take some cover and uh, I set up for a push on the right flank. So the blackjack tried to get out of there and therefore I, I just pushed ahead a bit because uh, if I get close he is dead. He's only a 45 ton mag and uh, I have massive firepower with my AC-20 and the SRMs. 
And we decided on a push on the right, so I'm just rushing and shooting my AC-20 and my SRMs. I'm uh, wrecking a component of the hunchback. Unfortunately, it was the wrong side and uh, yeah, I'm going for his massive laser rack on the right shoulder now to take that one out. As you can see, he is already caught or damaged in that component and he lost all of his firepower except for a medium laser. And that's, by the way, the reason why I'm just shooting once more to him while I'm on the run and then I decide, no, nope, this mech is dead already or it is not significant anymore. Anymore, I will switch back to the main force and I try to shoot at the relevant targets. Blackjack, for example. I see that his uh, left side is open and uh, yeah, we are committing to the kills now because they are pushed back pretty hard into the center area again and we have uh, a good amount of mechs on the right here and therefore we, we are pushing them and, and try to get some kills while they try to regroup. That's again very important, just go for the targets that are an immediate threat. The hunchback there was not and therefore again I switched targets here. Now another alpha strike to the blackjack, his side also is cherry red now and I want to commit to the kill but I know that there are a lot of mechs at the lower level trying to fight and I don't want to get shot by them at all so therefore I'm just uh, staying at high ground not exposing myself too much but as I see that the blackjack is uh, trying to get to cover I am going in I'm shooting my SRMs here by the way because they are cluster weapons and it was very easy to bring him down because I knew that the side also was so critical so pinpoint damage does not much there and therefore I went for the cluster weapon here comes a nice drop shot to the mad dog wrecking his side torso immediately and another shot to the other side and he is down only a marauder here uh, which is kind of in a bad spot he's trying Trying to escape, he's not fighting anymore, so uh, trying to reposition and at that point when you are overwhelmed by so many enemies you can just do your last stand, try to deal as much damage as possible. So what he did was, I don't know, kind of pointless but yeah, <laughs> it was a desperate a desperate measure here. So again, we, we are going in again, we have that Nightjar here and again I'm shooting my SRMs because I knew his center torso was open, so not the AC-20. And uh, yeah, it's just it's just a matter of time until we reach the, the final stages of the game. One AC-20 to the Jenner and he is down again and I'm fast forwarding here a bit because the last enemy was a disconnect which was kind of unfortunate. So I think um, the mech would have been very valuable for the enemy team but still we won the game by, by uh, a good amount of kills ahead. So let's have a look at the end score. 567 damage, 3 killing blows, 5 assists and uh, 10 components destroyed. So the Bushwrecker Micro Atlas just wrecks stuff and we are going over to the next round right now. So this time we are playing Conquest on the Crimson Strait and my team is doing kind of a saddle push here, which I'm actually not a big fan of that on Conquest. Um, just because uh, you are wasting a lot of your time just running around and um, the enemy, if, if they got data already, they can easily go to Kappa and, and get the advantage there. So um, again, I'm not a big fan, therefore I'm just dropping here. I just want to go to the tunnel and I want to support my King Crab. I saw that he was pushing there and uh, therefore I, I, I just took the opportunity to do something else. I again didn't want to go over to the saddle and I just tried to be relevant here. And as soon as I see that the, the tunnel is clear or it seems to be clear, I'm, I'm pushing ahead because I want to regroup with my team on the other side of the tunnel again. So if they are pushing the saddle, it's it's a good idea to go go in and, and try to regroup with them. Unfortunately, our King Crab just stopped the push. I have no idea why. But uh, we are a Kid Fox and an uh, even Jaguar with me here. And again, we are trying to, to get some, some separated targets here. Like the Nova. The Nova is already harassed by one of our light mechs. And my other two buddies are just going in to support there. And what I'm doing here is I'm not rushing to the Nova directly, but instead I am watching the left flank. I just want to give my team some intel if something is getting back to help out the Nova. Therefore, I popped my UAV and again, I am watching that flank and, and try to figure out if there are any mechs that are coming in to, to get his buddy out of trouble. But it seems that they are not doing that and then I decided to fight. The Nova is trying to flame me but um, yeah, he couldn't do much uh, being overwhelmed by three or even four mechs. Oh, I see that there is a light mech coming in and he dropped a UAV, so uh, I'm just committing to that because uh, I don't want to give the enemy as little intel as possible. And as soon as I see that the uh, Mislinx is coming in there, I'm giving him a shot with the AC-20 and he was yeah, brought down so, so fast. Unfortunately, the airstrike obstructed my vision there and I missed my shot to the Phoenix Hawk and my second shot of the AC-20 went through his armpit and <laughs> that was very, very unfortunate. It would be so cool if I would just hit his rear torso and uh, yeah, would have probably destroyed him in two volleys. 
But anyway, switching around to the right side because I see that there is a mech in distress having low signal. So that uh, means that he is countered by ECM and therefore I just wanted to help him that even Jaguar needs some support and I'm switching to the right flank and our friend the Phoenix Hawk comes out again here and now I am in perfect spot to shoot him. I have the high ground and I am not a threat and not a target for the enemy and therefore I can shoot all of my weapons pretty much freely to the Hellbringer and the Phoenix Hawk and we bring them finally down with our even Jaguar still alive. So that was very valuable switching a flank to that spot when we had a separated mech that needed help. Just just have a bit of battlefield awareness. Just uh, try to support your friends and try to to get in there when you are needed, especially when you are a mobile mech with a massive amount of firepower. You are running about, around 80 yeah, kph in the bushwhacker here right. and um, yeah again I, I was I was the the support that the even jaguar needed there to come out alive so we are going over to the center again we know we know that there are a lot of enemies on the platform as you can see they all bunched up there and i wanted to go to the saddle and push up the ramp so that i can support my team and fight there but i see that there is a marauder, marauder to see on the right side and he is shooting me with gauze and pvcs and some some missiles in a second so uh, i'm not afraid of the missiles because i can uh, splat the damage or splash the damage very very well when i'm engaging directly face to face um, because of the great hitboxes but the kid fox is doing a nice job arresting him and so again i can shoot my weapons pretty much freely without being targeted and that was that was um probably not the best idea of the marauder there so he should have targeted me with his pinpoint damage with the ppcs and the ghost rifles and uh yeah bring me down really fast because again i was the bigger threat to him i had more firepower than the kid fox and if he would have brought me down then he potentially could have fought the kid fox later Anyway, we got a night eye on top here, which is uh, destroyed by everybody. All of our teammates are just closing in on him, and uh, that's that's basically it. So uh, we we did some smart choices here. We uh, supported our teammates when when they needed it, and uh, then we we rolled over them from behind. And uh, yeah, we found some nice separated targets on our own and killed them really really quick with our massive damage spike loadout here. So, all enemies are dead, we are just capping that and we won the game. And that was a nice, nice round again. So, uh, yeah, let's let's have a look at the end score before we close the video and uh, and that's it for today. Come on, end screen, pop up. I know that you are there. Alright, 602 damage, I got one killing blow, uh, three kill most damage dealt here and uh, six components destroyed. That was your Micro Atlas Bushwhacker. I hope you liked the Daily Dose for today. And uh, if you did, don't forget to leave a rating or subscribe to the channel. And if you want to support me doing what I'm doing here, then go down below to the description. There's a link to my Patreon page that you can support me and get some nice rewards and bonus material out of that. And I hope to see you on the battlefield, everybody. Goodbye.